So I just wanted to do a little walkthrough about what I'm going to be covering in this video. So essentially I'm going to compare the power station, the Freyat power station to the Boss tube amp expander, and then I'm going to compare the power station to the Iron Man 2. My setup only allows me to do, I can only amp switch uh, two at a time, that's what I have. So the main function here is how do they work as attenuators or reampers? How clean and clear is the signal that comes through? How representative of the amp is it? What's good? What's less good? Which ones preserve the feel and tone the best? Which ones do it less well? And these units, well especially like the boss, has so many features and you can go find out about those features in other videos. Power Station has other features too that I'm not covering, like the effects loop and the uh, direct out and uh, being just a general power amp. And the Iron Man 2 is basically what it is, so that's going to be pretty much covered in this video. All right, so first we're going to go to the boss and the power station, and then I'll follow that up with the power station and the Iron Man 2. All right, so what I'm doing here today is I'm comparing the power station to the Waza tube amp expander by Boss. Going through a PT-15 and then through a quad cortex just to get it into the computer. And um, how we are running this is the PT-15 is set at eight ohms and both speaker outs are being used. One is going into the power station and one is going into the tube amp expander. These are both set at 16 ohms, so the load is, is correct. Then out of each of these, it is going into um, this boogie head track head switcher. And then out of the head switcher, it is going into this sur reactive load, which is acting as the final speaker so we can see how these perform as um, power amps and how closely they match the original signal. Uh, we will be, red is going to be the power station, which can completely bypass itself. So that's direct, that's direct from the amp. When this is up, the power station is on. And when this is blue, that's the Waza, which is blue. All of its lights are blue, so that makes it easy. So red is either the power station or direct, depending on if this is down or up. And we're just gonna compare some sounds here. And then I will talk you or walk you through it a bit. So I'm just gonna play. Let's start with the direct signal. So I'm on my neck pickup. Now we're going to go to the power station. Now we're going to go to the Waza tube amp expander. Now we're going to go back to direct. Let's do a bridge pickup here. Now we're going to go to the power station. Now we're going to go to Waza. All right, let's go back to... Power station. And the boss. And let's go to direct again. Power station. The boss. Direct. Let's see. Let's do something different. Power station. Boss. And 
back to Dorivet. Now, let's talk about this a little bit. The tube app expander, I have the EQ on because without the EQ, it's very flat sounding. It uh, loses all of its bass and all of its treble. It gets very mid-focused. So here's uh, the direct signal. And here's the boss. Here's the rap. And here's the boss. And I tried to I tried to use all these uh, reactive loads, and they don't really do that much. And there's also some worry that they will adversely affect your amplifiers. But this is with them all the way up, as much bass and as much presence as you can have. Still, compared to the direct signal. It's quite lacking. It's kind of got that blanket effect. So I'm keeping these down where they're safe. And they're probably safe up there too, or maybe, but some manufacturers won't warranty their stuff if you do that. So again, if I here's uh, direct. Here's the boss direct. Now here's with the EQ, which is much closer. Okay, and with that, what I'm doing is, I'll show you the EQ settings. This is how I have the EQ set. So we have bumps in 63 and 125, of 3 dB, we have a we have to bring down 250 hertz a lot by negative 3 dB, and 500 by 1. 1k is where it is, and then 2k and 4k go up 1 dB, and 8k and 16 have to go up 4 dB to kind of get that somewhat correct. You know, pretty close. I I worked at that for quite a while, and it is very close. Now the power station. It's extremely simple. Essentially, what we have here is the warm and bright are in flat, which they say is just resistive load. But what that means is that it's a direct load that isn't applying any EQ anomalies. When you go up to warm or bright or deep or edge, it's doing some other variants, which really helps actually when you bring the volume down and aren't trying to do unity, it kind of fills in where you might lose at lower volumes. Presence and depth are set at zero because that's neutral. So you can add in presence and depth from here. Now with the warm and bright, it's also nice, um, but it is a little more mid-scooped. What I did notice, though, is if I've used different amps, like I did do this with uh, this Fender Pro Reverb down here, and it actually sounded closer to correct with those uh, with those toggles at warm and bright, still with the presence and depth all the way down. Now you can also bring up the presence and depth to get the sound as close as you want, which makes sense. Every amp is going to interact differently with different speakers, so it's really great that you can adjust all of this stuff here. Now, with the Boss, it also sounds different with different amps, but it's really hard to adjust the EQ if you want to do it on the fly. So if, you like, if you're taking this out to gigs, but if it's in your studio and you have it hooked up to a computer, you can definitely get the sounds to be very close. Now, sounds are one thing. The other thing that's really important is feel. Right, and feel is is trickier. You know, um, what I have to say is, I have this, uh, was trying this too, this Bruguera, is it PS, 
passive. It's the one that everyone gets, passive 100 watt power and attenuator for $100 PS1. There it is, <laughs> in big letters. Now, the boss is, sorry, the, this sounds really bad. If, if I, I did the same thing with this, I'm not gonna hook it up again. Um, really bad in comparison. You lose all of your, that blanket effect that the, that the boss has is even worse. It's just all the highs, all the low, and, and kind of the reaction of the, of the sound, it just becomes very dull. So it still sounds like your amp, but kind of like a non-dynamic version of it. Um, so the, the boss does way better than something like this. And in fact, the sound is very close. The feel is almost very close until you really compare them. It's kind of like, and this is my best way to create an analogy for this. It's kind of like when you use a modeler and then you use an amp. The solid state power section of the boss is really good. It's really rem remarkably satisfying. But then when you go tube, either the power station or, or just direct, there's something about the bounce and the sponge of the interactivity. There's something, um, it's just a difference in feel more than you can hear it. What I will say is like the, the, the solid state power amp spikes a little more like certain frequencies with tubes seem to like compress when they hit their edges, whereas the solid state will kind of, the stuff will jump out that's a little more spiky. Um, but it's very good and it's very close. So what I'm noticing with the power station is I'm not losing anything with that. Like, okay. So now I'm going to do the comparison between the Iron Man and the Power Station. So there are a few things in this. First, the Iron Man 2 does not do true bypass, nor does it do unity. So even with solo on, right, even if I do this, where it says zero here, it's still cutting some, uh, some volume and EQing it slightly differently. It's, it gets a little fatter and a little quieter. So what I did is I just chose kind of a middle attenuation setting. It's minus 15 dB, we're on high, off. And then I matched it on this top channel, the power station. This is Unity. And this is me matching this as best as I can. So I have the, the bass all the way up to deep and the brightness up to bright, not up to edge in the middle. And then I added some more presence and some more depth. This is more scooped sounding and has a bunch of bass, um, more than, than the original tone. Um, so this is me trying to match them. And then what I'll do is I'll do bypass and then I'll turn that on, that top channel. And then I will swap over here the blue will be the Iron Man too, um, if I do that. Okay, and what I'm gonna have to, what I do up here is I compensate by turning the direct level and flipping that up, up into b between those two uh, to kind of volume match the true bypass signal to the attenuated or V-amped signal. Uh, so let's have a listen to that. So here is bypassed. No, here is volume matching up here. And now let's switch to the Iron Man. I can still hear the Iron Man's actually a bit brighter, so I might actually bring that up to edge, bring that down a little bit, see what that sounds like. Iron Man's still adding more bass. 
Let's try it on a neck pickup. So I need more presence too. Back to the Iron Man. It's definitely brighter. So we're back to the power station and I'm gonna add more presents. Pretty similar now. turn this off bright and bring up the presence just to match the feel. Yeah, they sound very similar now. So clearly the power station already has more flexibility in terms of you can really shape your EQ exactly how you want it. Now this does have the presence cut, so let's hear the difference. Bring it all the way down for a drastic. And then if I want to match this, I would probably just pull that presence out and see how it sounds. Yeah, very similar. So, so that's that. Um, again, if we go back to the original, just compensate. That signal is the direct signal, and it's much less, well, you could say it one way or the other. Either it's less mid-scooped, or the, the top and bottom aren't as big. What this is doing is it's trying to compensate for volume differences so that you can, with your amp as you change attenuation settings, that it sounds natural in the room, and it does a pretty good job of that. It, of course, depends on the room, and that's why it has this. It does add low end, right? You lose low end seemingly with volume, so it adds more low end as you attenuate more and more. Um, with the power station, you can control all of that much more than with the Iron Man. The Iron Man, you kind of get what you get, and you can, you can adjust that high end a bit. Um, as far as feel, there is something going on with the Iron Man that feels a little different. The power station feels, again, just like the amp. Um, if I go back to the line level. My volume's a little bit high. Yeah. I'm trying to get really spiky sounds here, that's why I'm playing like this. Alright, so if I go back once more to the uh, volume decreased. Now of course with the power station, if I want to take out that bottom and take out that top, 
right, the sound's gonna be like this. Which is very different than this. You can hear it like. And then if I switch here. It's much flatter because the volume's lower because it's it's not trying to match this. So that's what these are great at. They kind of compensate adding warmth, adding bite. Then you can add some more bass presence and then you're... takeaways here. <laughs> if we're comparing these two to each other, I would say that the Iron Man does change the feel slightly, not at all in a processed way, not at all like the tube amp expander, not at all like it's going digital so it still has that kind of aliveness to it, for sure. The bass gets this kind of really low boominess. Um, and the EQ just changes ever so slightly in this, in a certain way. It's pleasant. It's, it's not like there's anything unpleasant going on in it. And it obviously has, you know, these six levels. So you have to kind of commit to these six levels. The thing that will be easy about it is you will just go to whatever setting you go to and there won't be much you can tweak. On the flip side, the power station feels basically identical to the amp and you can control all of these variables. You can control how much presence, you can control how much depth to a much, uh, you know, on a sweepable range with, with these. And then you also have the clicks, which is more like this. This is kind of changing how the, the load is acting, whereas this is, EQing. Um, I would ass I'm assuming this also is affecting more on the load side than EQ, but I'm not 100% on that. Both units, although the, the power station looks bigger, uh, the Iron Man is deeper. Um, here, let's see, I'll put them front to front. So they're even at the front, but at the back, it sticks out about another two inches, might be hard to see, um, especially because we're at this angle, but it's definitely bigger. They're both really heavy. They're both like 17, 18 pounds. So you're kind of like, whoa, when you pick them up, but that's the load, the reactive load. Um, both really good units. Now I would say the power station, given that it's especially if you get the PS2, this is the PS100. So this one is, you know, 999, whereas the Iron Man is 800. So it's a $200 difference, but the PS2 is only $100 difference. You get a lot more out of it. It can function as a standalone power amp. It can boost the signal of a low power amp. It has an effects loop. It has um, the ability to bypass and to me, it actually sounds more real. It sounds more like your amp. The Iron Man benefits are it is simpler. It doesn't have as much, I guess you could say it doesn't have tubes. So you're not gonna ever have to service it in that way. Um, 
once you get used to it and if you like it, you'll be happy with it. For me, I would definitely go with the power station just because it's much more versatile. You can control everything. It's just like adding more to your amp. Whereas Iron Man is really just like an attenuator. Power station, you could just run through it and make your amp sound even better by adjusting its EQ if you wanted to. You know, you could use it as an actual tool, even at Unity, or, you know, increasing it slightly, decreasing it slightly. Um, so I would lean towards the power station. Of course, the Iron Man, if you drop it, it's probably going to survive better, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. I wouldn't recommend dropping these things. Um, it, it does feel really heavy, so it probably would hurt itself. I'm just wondering if there's anything else to say. I know that the most important thing is like, how does it sound? How does it feel? And again, I would say the Iron Man feels really nice. It sounds very good. It does have a kind of compensating EQ that is supposed to hopefully work with your ears to reproduce sound in the room. So I've done this, I've taken this and played through speakers and you know, it's so hard when you're playing through a speaker and you change volume to know if it sounds the same. That's why I'm doing it this way, going through the sort of reactive load. Because any other way, it's just, it's just so hard to do with your head. Um, but as far as what I like, I, I enjoyed both of them at low volumes. I wasn't like, oh my god, the Iron Man sounds horrible and the power station sounds great, or oh my god, the power station has this issue. I felt like with the power station, I could just do whatever I wanted. If I wanted more treble, more bass, if I wanted it to sound whatever way, I could just really sculpt that. And with the Iron Man, I, I would say it just sounded good. It sounded good. Now, if we're going to compare these also to the Boss... All right, now as far as comparing the three of them, I'd say the Iron Man 2 is the simplest. It doesn't have tubes. It doesn't really do anything aside from attenuate. It sounds quite good. As you decrease volume, it kind of makes sense the way it sounds. It does change the feel a little bit. It's a little... This is my, my description of it. To me, it sounds a little bit like you're playing through a pedal. A little more like that. It's somehow the feel of it sounds a little bit more like a really good pedal than, than an amp. Just a bit, just a hair. Still feels like an amp. Um, it does not have full bypass, so if you want to be able to have your amp go full and then attenuate, you'd have to just unplug it. Go direct. It has a little bit of EQ adjustment with that presence. The, it does have strong bass. The solo feature is a little bit more of a jump than I'd want it to be, um, but it's, it's a it's a very good unit. So that's that's at eight hundred dollars currently. Then the power station, to me, sounds the most perfect. It sounds just like the amp. It sounds just like the amp with some more controls to tweak your sound even further. I felt like I could get it to sound like the Iron Man if I wanted it to. Now, as you're adjusting volume, it's not just going to be like, this is your sound. Um, which I would say is good in a live situation because every room is different, every situation is different. You also don't have the attenuator jumps, right? The Iron Man goes from here to here to here to here. The power station, it's gradual, everything's gradual, the EQ. So, and of course, at, depending on which model you get, $100 or $200 difference, you're getting other things like an F effects loop that you can use it as an amp, that you can turn quiet amps into loud amps. So to me, it has a lot more utility. It might be a little bit less durable because it has tubes, it has more components, but it's just as durable as an amp. So if you're bringing an amp around, you know, to me, I, again, wouldn't want to drop the Iron Man 2. I, I would be careful with that unit, too, because it's it's going to have a quick 
rise to its terminal velocity from here to there because it's so heavy. Now, the boss, I would say the boss has a more realistic portrayal of your amp than the Iron Man 2. But it adds a different flavor, which sounds more like, you know, 25% of a modeler. It, it gets, you still have the, the amp going into it, so it still feels like an amp. And it almost sounds like an amp, but when you compare it, it's like, oh yeah, there's that, there's a bit of something. And the best way I can describe it are these kind of, there's a little bit of a harderness, slightly harder, and then EQ spikes that, that, you know, like a high mid or some, some high frequency will kind of jump out a little more than it would through the natural amp or through the power station or through the Iron Man, which would kind of, it would all kind of mush into itself that you get a little bit of less spiky sound. Um, still, this is subtle, so it's a really good power amp. The difficulty with it is that you can't EQ it on the fly. Those, those uh, initial resonance and whatever they are, those, those two things don't do enough. And again, there's like, are they completely safe? I'm not sure, so I'm a little scared of them. The internal EQ is great, but you would need a computer. So if you wanted to use that live, you'd probably want to have a computer because as you turn the volume down, the sound will get thinner and then you'll want to add more bass. And you could program, it has uh, the 10 stages. So you could program each of those to have different EQs. You could have increasing bass, increasing mids, increasing treble, decreasing. You could, you could preset that and then kind of have all these options available to you. The unit also of course has Lots of other features that the other two units do, don't. So it, it has an FX loop like the power station. It has direct out like the power station, but it also can uh, go straight to headphones. It can load IRs. The IRs that come with it are not very nice, and strangely and unfortunately, but you can load in really great IRs. Uh, it has internal effects. It has reverb on a dial that you can control. It has echo modulation, again, the EQ, which is, which is of vital importance if you're gonna use the unit. Uh, to reproduce sound to, as, as a power amp. Of course, again, the echo modulation, all these things need to be preset. You can't adjust anything. You, uh, I think you can adjust tap tempo uh, with a foot switch, but, but you can't kind of tweak parameters unless you hook into a computer. So, so for live use, personally, I would say the power station because Let's say you go with a 20 watt or a 50 watt amp. You can bring it down, you can bring it up. You can have even more control over the EQ in the room. It will sound and feel exactly like your amp. That's at least in my opinion. Now the Iron Man, if you know you're gonna need lower volumes, volume and you're gonna want it to just kind of be simple, I think it's a great option. And the Boss, it would totally work. I'm just a little hesitant without being able to adjust anything. But again, if you kind of set it up and you're like, for instance, if you took the Iron Man 2's EQ and you kind of matched that with the boss at each attenuation level and you were like, okay, these are my six levels of, and, and with each one I want more bass here, a little less mids here, a little less, and you kind of set that all up and you had those different uh, stages that you could Select, you could probably pull it off. It would probably be pretty good at that. So I hope this is helpful. And as long as you know what you're getting into, I'm sure you're gonna be happy with any of these.